So um, today we're making a dove in flight. So I've cut two part two two uh, slices of clay, one a wee bit thicker. This is going to be the body. Uh, let's see how thick it is. I the piece I've cut's about three centimeters thick uh, for the body, and the slice for the wings really only needs to be about a thumb thickness. So hopefully you'll have received your template for the dove or downloaded it and printed it out onto an A4 page. You simply start by we'll make the we'll cut the body out, then we'll cut the wings out, we'll work at the wings a wee bit, and then we'll come back to the dove. Um, so you just simply lay this piece of clay is slightly thicker. The way I've cut it accidentally is slightly thicker here and tape clay to be round the dove's chest area. So I'm actually going to do this in reverse. So you just put it on the clay and then using um, the back of a paintbrush or a pencil. Now I ignore the beak and just draw out around the template to give you the body and gently take off the template. Sometimes these uh, like needle tools are the best for cutting out um, and remember to keep your um, tool vertical. You don't want it slanting one way inside than the other. So keep it as vertical as you can. I am working on a cotton cloth, um, mainly because the wings are going to be quite fine. And to handle the wings and to stop them sticking, to the wooden board, the cloth really helps. So just take your excess off. This will be a much quicker and easier make than last week. I'm actually going to go back to the bag. You can make this out of the air drying clay, but I'm I'm using because I have a kiln. I'm going to use white earthenware clay, so that's given me the basic um, bird body size. The advantage of the template is it allows you to get the proportions. You don't really need to worry about the head being too big or the wings being too small, it just gives you the proportions. So I put this to one side and then I'll bring over the piece for the wings. If you do have a rolling pin, you can start rolling it out slightly. Just sandwich your clay between two pieces of cotton cloth, one at, one at the bottom and one at the top. You can use guides. These are guides. If you're using guides, generally you set one, you put your two cloths over and you set one either side and you roll the clay from the center, centered out and the center down. And that gives you an even thickness of clay. But for the dove, you don't really need to do that so much because with the wing template, we want the thick the clay to be thicker here, where the I think on one of your drawings you should see where the bone structure is. It kind of comes down and up. Um, this all needs to be thicker because there's a muscle around those bones, and this will be thinner. So you don't really need the guides, but the rolling pin is good. So I'll just have to do this. 
and when you're wrong, I always roll from the center out. I don't roll it too thin. Now once you've rolled it in one direction and turn it over. So these birds will be, um, you'll be able to mount them on the wall. So always when you're making a sculpture, you always want to think about the end result, how you're going to display it. So you can have any potential problems in your mind from the start and have a solution to that problem. So when we're making this, before we let it dry too much, we do have to make a hole that we'll be able to put, put a wee um, picture hanging hook into, or it could be just mounted on a, a nail into the wall. So I am just rolling that out when I'm rolling that out. I really want to be able to get two of these onto that. Um, Do keep turning your the clay. The reason behind that is if you're firing, well it's more so if you're firing the clay. Whatever surface you're rolling stretches a wee bit more than the surface that's on the cloth. So as it dries, the clay can warp. It encourages the clay to warp if you don't turn it while you're rolling it. And remember you don't want to let the clay get too thin either so um you can cut a bit from say the lower edge and join it or cross hatch and join it on smooth it together and join it on if you if need be So then again, you just draw around your template with a pencil. You don't need to be too fussy with this lower edge of the feathers because it's going to be a lot more organic by the time you finish making it. So it will have changed from the template, but the bit that you don't want to change from the template is this top line. So I'll just show you the template. This is the top line of the wing. You don't want that to change too much. Um, you don't want it to get too long and you don't want to get too wobbly. I'll show you more when we're making it, but you do definitely want to think about this being a straight line, this being a straight line with, um, you know, um, it's kind of like a notch there, but the wee bend in the middle. Um, you don't want to think of it as being an arc because bones don't grow in an arc. Think about, think about the bone structure in underneath. This is quite, so, no was saying about it being straight because the bones are this shape underneath there could be a slight curving to this joint but once you get to here this is um, a straight bone so you, if you have a straight bone you're not going to have saggy under a saggy edge underneath so 
so that's why I've included the bone structure. So once you've traced it over the template on one side, just turn your template over. Okay. And the off cuts from this keep them because you can layer up feathers. So that's the two wings covered. Just like some wings covered. Just remember this is mainly to give you the proportions, the size. So I'm not even going to worry about these feathers. I'm just going to kind of do the general rough shape. The, this excess we need so to make um, feathers. So then that gives us the two wings. Right. So that just the last piece, piece to cut out is the tail. I'm not worried about these, I'll add those on. I'm going to fit this in here. Again, this is really just the most important bit is these two lines. These are not so important because you're going to, I'll show you a technique that this is going to be very uneven anyway. Do you want, what you do want is to have the same volume. You know, we talked about symmetry in another video. You do want the same volume of clay on both sides. So if this is a big thick bit and this is a wee thin bit, that's going to be harder to make that even um, further down the line. So if from the start when you cut it out, that's even both sides. It'll just make life easier for yourself. So I'll just take one wing and what I want to do, this clay is quite soft, I'll just on my finger, I'm going to one sponge down that edge just to soften that edge. Just don't want a square edge. So do it on both sides. And um, just with the sponge, you see the way there's like a crease. If I think of this being the back of the, it's a bit too big. I'm just too big, kidney. So you know, you might need a fair bit of clay. So in, I'm not putting it square on, I'm putting it at slightly at an angle and then I'll overlap that to create the feeling of feathers and what I want is to see the way as I've stroked that a little clay has come, I've, I've, I've moved the clay off the edge, the cut edge to create this, you want to do that. Uh, 
um, I'm on your um, second photograph um, download you will have it'll show you the direction the feathers grow so that you know these ones so if you think of the middle here being the, the hinge these feathers are nearly coming out from there in this kind of direction and then we'll get you get the other side of the hinge then they go on this side I will work on that more later but that's enough to give us um, the start of that now we're going to work on this side so again you do have to keep reminding yourself that these two wings go together so you need to make two backs on the same side if that makes sense so these will be if you think of these being a pair I need to do the I've done the back of this one so I'll do the back of that one so I'll just soften the edges Pouring the three in here, right, and then again, just the the tool at an angle. Just going to do this, and that, you know, you can put your finger at the point of that joint, so you know when the feathers start going straight, and then when they start to go at that angle. So that's that one done. Let me turn it over. I'm just thinking, I wonder, can you see enough from this angle? I'll maybe just put it a wee bit higher up and see if I can angle the camera down. Let me see. Can you see what I'm doing any better there? Hopefully. Right. So, um, soften the edges. So what we're going to do next is reinforce the area you will see it in I've given you two PDFs to print out. One is the template. Um let me see we've got a spare one. Of course I didn't bring the other one up here with me. So one of them looks like this. The other shows you the bone structure. So I'll call this one and the other one I will call two. So on PDF2 you see the, the, the bone structure in underneath. So I just want you to reinforce that a little. And um, when I say reinforce, I just mean cut a wee bit of extra thickness of clay and lay it on where the muscles are. So for my excess clay. I've cut a piece and it's saying it's probably thumb width um, and so I'm just going to lay that on just where the it's a bit too thick actually so now you this clay is quite wet so I don't need too much slip. Remember to sort of tap your slip on. You don't want to brush the slip on because if you're brushing it on, you're smoothing out the cross hatching you've done. So you just kind of stipple it in to 
through your cross hatching. This actually I'm going to put it on a wee bit thicker than I wanted, so I'm just making that a wee bit thinner. So, um, the bone structure is sitting across here, roughly level there, if anything, a wee bit of a joint and a wee bit of a rise at that joint. But then from that joint down, you want to taper it. You want it to taper downhill to the level of the rest of the wing. And I'm just going to put another wee bit of clay. This is this kind of bone structure shape, but I also want a wee bit of extra clay here where the muscle's going to be, because that'll just give me a stronger um, insertion point or attachment point when I come to attach it to the main body of the bird. And you just could smooth that down, fold that in. I'm going to blend it in here, but I'm leaving this pride along this line by smoothing it in. When you're doing this, do be careful you don't make the, the wing underneath that bone and muscle too thin. You just want to blend the two together. So you blend the two together without making the wing any thinner. So then we just stroke this top line. Again, we're looking for that to be, you know, as straight as possible, and then for there to be an obvious joint. Yeah. We are, are going to add more detail on for the, the wings. We don't need to do that just yet. We'll do a little of it. So same as you did um, on the other side. Just remember the direction that the feathers go. Um, the other thing is I'm putting gentle pressure at the bow and pressing deeper as I stroke to the outside. So gentle pressure Stroking firmly, more and more firmly, to the outside. I'll keep my finger here so I know where that starts to change direction. So gently and then firmly. But do keep your toe clean. Gently and firmly. I, I would leave that at about that stage, but you can go back later on and um, just to show you roughly what we'll be doing. Mm. So 
so you can get a wee sausage of clay, put it in your hand and then the same technique as I used for creating the mane, so thick at the attachment end, this end, and then more and more pressure until, and then you can just pinch it off till you get a nice shape. But what that's giving you is a really fine edge. And then you can layer some of these over the top. Um, join them well at your thick end. Maybe one other edge, but do leave a wee bit um, sitting almost loose on the top there. So I'll do more that at the end. That's just letting you know what we're doing. So I will work on and do this other one. So good news for those of you who are watching and um, who live in Northern Ireland. If you order your clay from Monster Ceramics, they were running um, quite low on the air dried clay because of this lockdown. The manufacturer wasn't producing anymore, but fortunately the manufacturer is back at work and they're expecting a delivery at the end of next week. So if you don't have a kill and you don't have the clay to do this at the moment, Oster Ceramics will have the clay in at the end of the week. But also uh, if you don't want to order a large amount, you just want enough to make this, um, you can contact me by email at stepbystep sculpting with Sharon all one word at gmail.com and I can send you a kit which includes the tools, the wee um, airtight box and clay enough to do this for you. And if you're making these at home and you run into any difficulties Please send me a photograph or an email and I'll do my best to give you feedback and help you in any way I can. Yeah, I'm just thinking of the bone structure and there being a definite joint. If I didn't reinforce this bone and muscle, the skeleton, and if I didn't enforce the shoulder, the whole thing would be very floppy and very prone to breakage uh, once it's um, finished. Bear in mind the bone structure. And the fact that this, if anything, it almost goes uphill to this joint and then goes downhill. the
So that's the underneath of the wings. Just take out the side. And then we do something similar with the tail, similar technique. Um, so soften those edges. And then just gentle pressure, stronger pressure, gentle, stronger. So we go light, deep, light, deep. And you're, you're fanning that out from this center point. Sometimes birds, can you, I don't know, you can hear the birds in the background. That's nice. It's just an unusual noise, isn't it? Really? And then we can work at this more, but you know, from your drawing, you should see that it's kind of shorter going to, there's kind of like two long feathers. So we could add, you know, we could do the same technique and add wee bits more on. But we don't want it, after you've done that, I would just go back with your template. What I'm looking for is that those, that those two edges don't become too long. You know, so that you're getting a nice fan shape out from the centre. And again, we just put that aside to dry slightly. Now I will move on to the body of the bird. So you, when you've cut it out, you've got quite square edges. So we just want to soften that time. Let's move the bird in the back way. Let's come on out there. So whenever you're sculpting anything, I always try to get as many curves in as possible. So look to get that curve from beneath the dove's chin, round its fat chest, and then curve nicely to a tip. But the tip, this will go towards the tail, take a bit off um, and take a bit off both sides. You want to work symmetrically here. This movement. And then give it a wee pinch around the neck. Start creating the head. Just you're changing it from being quite square edges. You want to bring that into a ball, more of a ball shape. But don't lose. If you feel like you've lost the shape of it, um, go back to your template. Now I just cut this out roughly. If you were to cut around the black line, you can lay it over and just check that your head hasn't become too big or too small. One of the things to watch out for is when people are making these, they have a tendency to nearly throttle the per wee bird and make the neck very thin and very long. You just really want the suggestion of a waist between the chest and the head. You don't want a big long skinny neck. At that yeah, she looks a wee more. And we're probably going to add a wee bit extra on for the chest. Um, just this area here, just to create a fullness. So when you're working at the head, you create a wee bit of a waist. If you're looking at the bird's head from above, let's get this as straight onto this. This will be the widest point, you know, just roughly where the eyes are, and then it will taper. So you can start 
carry it in that taper just by stroking it. And clay likes to be moved a little bit at a time. So you don't want to be, you know, moving large volumes of clay with your thumb, just gentle stroking. You need to just keep wiping your hands if you're going to feel it. I can't wait to see your birds when you've finished. Hopefully the template will help you. Kidneys are great for levelling out. See the way this area is high and that's high and there's a wee dip in the middle. Kidneys are great for levelling areas like that out. And maybe we'll do a wee quarter wee session just how to use the tools and what they're best used for, what their advantages are in sculpture. Just doing this to smooth off those corners. And you just check it from all different angles to see if your clay is symmetrical. Check off this corner of the edge. So this is the back of the clay where the wings will be attached. Because I'm using earthenware clay and I will be firing this. Um, I don't need to cut another bit of clay and add it on there, which if you're using air dry clay, I would recommend that that's probably what you do. When you're using clay that's to be fired in the kiln, you really don't want it to be as thick as that if you can avoid it. So, and you certainly wouldn't want to be adding more clay onto that thickness without hollowing it out. So if I cut a wee slit, in the centre of the clay and I'm maybe going in as deep as that with the, the knife. I can open it up slightly and just press out with my finger where I want that plumbness of the chest to be. Um, you can use your your inside finger you pushing out with. You can use your outside hand, your outside hand as a guide, so that I don't want to push out an area here, and I don't want to push out an area at the neck. So I'm going to frame the area that I want to push out, and that way I'm only pushing out the area where I want the extra fullness. So again, a little bit at a time, remembering that I don't want the clay to be any thinner than a finger thickness. So that side coming around a wee bit. So I'll have a wee look. So it needs more here. So once you have it, Right, where you want you can either stuff that center with a wee bit of newspaper or actually I find bubble wrap is, is really good for stuffing into cavities like that. Sometimes when you go to stuff in newspaper and newspaper is catching and scratching and nearly creates two you know it can create thinner areas so a wee bit of bubble wrap just in there. So I don't want that 
to fall forward so while I'm, I'm looking for the bubble wrap I'll just prop it up with a wee prop underneath. It's tissue paper soft um, soft materials that can burn away so even then actually that's too big for that I'm going to actually use my blue roll to fill that out it's just to give it a wee bit of support I don't want it to be too plump because I know when the birds are on the ground or they're, they're resting they can have a very they can be quite puffed out looking when they're flight they become a bit more streamlined or aerodynamic Oh, I'm just work it out. Are you kidding me? Just check on the worst of I had Wi-Fi problems today. I've actually had internet problems all week. Well, since the rain started. Um, so I don't know what that's about. Oh, that's it. Trying to get a bit smoother. And let's squish that hair down. Just looking as I'm making this, I'm looking to have a nice curl from the head. Not like that. Then around the chest. And the tail. So every now and again do you get your template and just check has it stretched too long um the bit i'd be looking at especially is the tendency for the neck to get too long so just check up the top of the head and the neck yeah. See these wee uh, dinges and rough bits I can clean up with a sponge. And then you just check it from all angles to see that it's symmetrical. And then I wouldn't work on this on the, your surface work in your hand and keep your hand cupped so you're not flattening that that nice chest so
Okay, so the next stage is just put my eye in the beacon. So, um, again, I probably should have cut. If you've cut this out exactly, you can fit this over your wee bird. And you just make a mark for the eye. Right in there. Put a beacon there. Put a wee beacon there. Generally, um, the eye looks along the beak. It's almost like the sight of a gun. So the eye is just in front of, just level with the beak. So I'm just going to put a little bit more time on it. And then I'm going to draw a centre line. Line up the straight up the center line on the other side. Okay. And then you just put your you can actually measure the mince too. Um to to make sure that the eyes are the same distance apart from that center line. Start by making a small hole for the eyes and then if you need it to go up or down or back or forward you can do that by making the hole bigger but start with a small hole and make it bigger. You can either leave these eye holes as just um, an indentation like that or you can go back and put um, an eyeball in there um, just from another bit of clay, leave it a slip and put that in. Then the next stage we'll look at is just the beak. So with the beak, make the beak much thicker than you want and as your clay dries, use a sharp craft knife to trim it thinner. You definitely don't want the beak to start off too thin. Thin means fragile and where the beak attaches to the bird, you want that to be a thick edge. To, so you have a good strong attachment and then the night from the last one and the dove's beak just curves ever so slightly and also with the beak um, this is the top edge you know this top edge here this almost goes into like a ridge and then comes out. If I was to cut through that. Um, so cross section, let's say this is the bit that attaches to your bird's head. You want that to be almost like a diamond in cross section that it has a point a ridge at the top and a bit of a ridge at the bottom and then that would be the half eye line of your beak openings. So a wee beak. Um, kind of good when it comes to the length of the beak um, a good rule of thumb is roughly how far the eye is back from the centre of that cross, that depth, you then you want the beak to come out that depth. Um, but depending on the bird, of course, with this little wee dove, so I don't want the particular size beak. So that's a bit too long.
I from the centre. You want to keep that, keep that um, the quarter mark in until you have the beak attached. So this is in the centre. Okay, I'm just going to take a wee short break here because the last time the video ran out on me so I'm, I think I'm better deciding where to stop and then I'll restart it in a wee minute and we'll do more detail around the, the size. It'll just be a wee short, not even five minute break just to uh, make sure I don't run out of video. Okay, so part two. We've... Um, made a start on now again we'll go back in and refine the wee beak when the clay starts to firm up um, just that in. so next thing we're going to do is we're going to make some definition to the bird's head and it's just by thinking about different planes so we we'll see if we maybe start from above. So we know the area where the eyes are is just about the widest area. So we want to to narrow, just gently pinch the top of the head towards the beak. And we can just check our beak spot if that's in there. And we will be fine. So it's narrower here going out and then we want it to come in after that. So we'll just work with that on the top. And actually I'm not too happy with the height so I'm actually going to take a little drop. When you're working with sculpture you're constantly reassessing. Is this does this look right? What's wrong and why? Um, so I was just thought that was what I why I knew it was wrong was there was too much area above the eye. Um, and the top of the head is fairly flat. Okay. So just narrowing here, come right wider, and then narrowing here, and sliding into the back of the head. So I'm going to use a tool, this like a spoon shape tool, and I'm just going to go through the eye. I'm just going to create like a cheek. This gets deeper and deeper. as if I've created that lower. Can you see how that's like a cheek now? So you've got two different planes and you can I think the centre of the nose with this tool I'm going to kind of curve it to the centre of the nose beak. <laughs> centre of the beak and then curve right. When you're working at the head like this, do be very aware that you're not squashing the body. After we've worked on the head, we'll just need to check um, the proportion. 
portions of the body and the symmetry, the symmetry of the body. Another wee word about beaks. So if you're working, if you're on the beak, the beak can give you a lot of character. If you want your bird to look happy, give your beak a wee bit of an upward flexion. If you want it to be sad, have it a, give it a wee downward flexion. And one of the reasons I tell you that is sometimes when people are making birds, they go, oh, my bird looks so sad. So they, all they need to do is just tip up that beak and it'll become a much happier little bird. So what you've done on one side, again, before you do that, I want to make sure there's a bit of an S, a bit of a curve there, and a bit of a curve here. I'm going to take a wee bit away here, because I can see that's too thick. If you're not sure, you can just lay your template above. Oh, I can see by eye, that's too thick. Remember your beak's going to be thicker at this stage than it will be at the end. The very last one of the last things you'll do is just to trim away to make the beak smaller and thinner. But you want it until it dries. You want it to have a little bit of thickness. Good. So. Um, birds have a fairly large eye, so when you are um, making your bird too, just watch that you don't make the eye too small. I, I've um, drawn it on a template there to give you a bit of a guide. Just move this in. And then I'll just look from the centre and try to get that symmetry in. No claim at all. There we are. Magic. One of the things the spin shape tool does is it allows you to create fullness. Uh, I don't know if you can see it from that angle. You see it? There's a bit of a fullness there that this tool allows you to create. I'm going to do that on the other side. So viewed from above, I don't know if you can see this properly on this, you can see that this play in the top of the skull is much narrower than the cheeks.
I just remembered that wee bit of a waist um, at the neck. Um, at this stage I was a wee bit too soft. What you can do is roll a wee thin sausage of clay. Oh, I'll try and do that again. Clay is a wee bit soft because I'm working with that. A little more clay. So again, this is a detail that you can leave on. It. It's not really essential. And a wee bit of silk. I think it's pretty soft. Just look at the main colour, but there's a wee band. Just like that. So again, that wee red brush. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to think about is um, what pose the bird's going to be in. I'm going to, I want this bird to be attached to the wall so um, it's in flight so then you just make the decision then about, I should have actually put on the template where you attach the wings. But you know that the neck, you should have made a definite neck. Um, so if you think of the shoulders being here, the wings don't attach to the centre of the back. The wings will attach. So if this is your body, the wings will attach about there. Um, so I'll just do a little trim. But I just want to think what pose I want that wing to be. Um, you can move it, you know, you can bend your wing to whatever shape you want. But do remember to keep that bone straight. Um, so let me see. Mm, I'm going to have that wing going up. I to touch on the angle, so I'll cut it at an angle. Mm. Just thinking for you at home, it might be easier to put the two wings together, even though that anatomically they don't touch from the centre of the back. It may be easier, yes, it'll be easier for you to work with at home if you attach the two wings together. So, um, I'll just cut a wee square. The advantage of, of putting the two wings together like this is you're not going to have one wing up and one wing down. Um, you're not going to have to worry about that, so we'll just put these together. Close that. Mm -hmm. 
the ways you can help yourself is if you have a wee skewer you can put a skewer into the clay if I had a wee skewer here I would be well prepared which I'm obviously not so you could put a skewer in through the muscle And what that does is that when you're arranging the whatever pose of the wings, it means that you're going to keep, I've put the skewer in, but the skewer would not extend um, further than this joint. That means when I'm planning what, what pose those wings will be going in, um, I know that it'll be easy to keep that straight line. This area there is very important to keep as a straight line. So now I just think about what my ideal bits need to be. What I can do is I can just be scared to extend a wing wee bird. And you can work at your angle. So I just want you not squishing it. Ideally, if you're making this at home, make your body, make your wings and leave them for a day loosely covered so that they do get some chance to firm up um, and then you need to think about how do you turn the eagle's head a bit so now you're going to think about how you're going to attach the bird to the I want this to be wall mounted so you want this one to be tall. Okay, and then I'm going to extend that. So it's a wee foot better getting it to the angle you want. But you will help yourself if you let the clay dry for a few days in between, which of course I have. And when you've done You've got the, the clay the way you want. With the pencil, I would, because I want this to be wall mounted, I am going to stick the pen in, or the pen, pencil in like this. That'll just give me a hole at an angle. You don't want the hole going in um, horizontally, because then your bird would could fall off. You want that. This pencil is representing the wall fixing, which I want to be at a slight angle. And then I would just put that aside, um, put that aside for a day and let that firm up. Because this is a little bit too soft at this point. It's very hard to make a sculpture from start to finish in the one day because um, some of the stages you need to do them in the clay soft and the other stages you will need to let the clay dry slightly. So I'm going to set this aside for one day and well, maybe more than one day I will make the, the next video on Monday. But that should give you, oh, I forgot all about the tail. Um, the tail that you've made, you attach above that muscle. So the tail attaches like that.
Okay. So that's about as much as we can do for today. So thank you very much for joining me and I look forward to seeing how your wee birds turn out too. Okay, I'm just going to try this final bit from an aerial point of view as I realised as I watched part two back that at times I was working off camera so you couldn't really see what I was going to do or what I was doing. Um, this bird is going to be um, wall mounted so I can, um, it is no problem to work from the board. So I'm just doing a wee bit of just clean my tools, clean any dry clay off, and it's a wee bit too, it's a wee bit too fat there. So I'm just again I want this almost a teardrop shape of the chest. Actually, I would have preferred the, the fullness of the chest to be slightly higher. Think about your, your roast chicken dinner, the fullness being slightly higher. I'm just going to be hauling in. I'm just really tidying them up a wee bit because I kind of, to be honest, he was a wee bit roughly handled in between there so I just was trying to rearrange things so you could see things better. So I'm just working at the, the head just to make sure that this area is narrower and the cheeks but then the cheeks you, you do want them to be broader but you don't want them to be ridiculously broader um, so just working at that and then just thinking of swiveling that head by making the bird straight to begin with when you go to bend the neck you're more likely to bend it around that center axis or the the spine so just turn that head turn the bottom to be looking down a little you can bring it forward just to you get it to where you want it right um I think I want the whole bird turned around slightly. So I'm going to rock it around. I will probably make um, another video of making another wee bird like this. I want to make a series of these anyway um, because I would quite like to display a few of them in the studio. I know the studio is not open to the the public at the minute. Down project, project 24 we're all closed up because of this coronavirus. But um, thought it would be fun to put a wee display in the window of something I normally wouldn't. So I like the idea of these birds. So I'm going to make a series of these. So, so yeah. 
So I'm making these decisions as I go along. Probably would be a good idea to have a very clear, defined um, idea in my head before I start. But I can see if I'm not very white. So again, it's just what I'm thinking about now is what position I want these wings to be. Mm, kind of mash this up a wee bit when I was putting the skewer in and then taking it out. But, I'm just straightening this up. Uh, I do need that to be a straight line. And then this to be a straight line. And do um check against your template that your wings haven't increased too much in size. So I think I will have a bend in that so that for this wing I'm going to have this wing coming straight here and then the joint there. Um, so the, the bone you should see, I think the bones end right here. So this tip can flare up and again. I like to get, you know, add a S bends in wherever I can. So then I just need something to prop that up. So I'll prop that up. That's the roughly the position I want him to be in. Um, I want to add a wee strengthener in um, just where the wing attaches to the body. This is a white earthenware clay, so it does dry quite quite quick. Quick, <laughs> really speak quite quickly. So I'm just putting my fingers behind it to support it. So when I press that in, again, you just want to be careful that you don't trap air when you're doing this. Slide that in. I'm recording this on my phone so I can only do about 10 minutes at a time. So I shall have to watch my 7 minutes or 10. So just joining that into the, the shoulder of the bird. Sure that's well joined. I'm just running my finger and um, behind that to make sure that's well joined in. Leave that on the straight line. So as it firms up, I can go back and look at this and just check that um, it hasn't dropped down too much. Use wee bits of clay just to support it in the the angle you want it to end up. As I've worked at it here, um, the other thing I want to look at, as I've worked at it here, this has got far too deep. This length is far too big for the bird. So I'm going to take it away from about there. So from the template, you can see that these wings let me see what angle it is that. Um, these feathers tilt towards the body until I get to about this joint. Straight and tilt.
So you want to have a nice sort of organic uneven edge there. What I also need to work on is the feathers will be not exactly flat, but you do have to remember they will be attached to this wing. So from the at least about the midsection, that's going to be a straight line to the wing. And it'll be harder for you to see in the video, so I'll do it off video. I'll work at the same technique um, to create the, the, the feathers. I'm not going to do much on the back because this bird's going to be wall mounted. You're not really going to see the back. So really, I'll wait the the clay is leather hard before I um, do any modelling of the back. I'll just use a wee damp paintbrush. To just blend in any edge. I probably want this um, this dove to be quite smooth and flat. So whenever the bird is leather hard, I will take a sponge and just smooth it with a sponge first. Um, can nearly go down the grades of sponges. In your kit you will have a round uh, sponge like this. This is That would be maybe the coarsest one you could use. Um, I like to finish off with um, a makeup sponge, especially those wee wedge shaped makeup sponges are very handy for getting into the wee nooks and crannies. And you're finishing it off, do you remember the direction those feathers are going and do your paint, your paintbrush work in the direction of the feathers. Whenever it's dried a wee bit more you can layer over um, small sections of feathers on the inside and around that. There's like nearly a cap of feathers around this joint. So I'll maybe pause there and then upload the next wee bit. Stop. Okay, so now we're going to look at the left hand wing. So similar to the other side, I'm just going to put a wee strengthening part here um, where the wing attaches. So just do a bit of cross touch. Just add another wee pad of clay. Um, if in doubt, add too much clay and then you can take it away rather than have lots of clay added one on top of the other which um, only increases the likelihood of trapping um, an air pocket behind it. So, and then just smooth that on. Uh, another wee tip for you, if ever you are in doubt about trapping air like say for instance you've made an eye and you've as you worked at it the eye has become too flat and you've added another pad of clay over the top um if your sculpture is hollowed out um you can or like this there's just it's not overly thick you can with your your needle tool you can put a few um holes now, as long as the hole goes right out through to the other side or right through to a hollow of the clay um, you can use this technique um, and what you do then is you can just smooth them over the top so what that does is that creates somewhere for the air to go so, 
so if there's any risk of trapped air, it's getting out the other side and what it'll let it kill. You don't need to worry about this if you're using air drying clay because there's no firing process. So now I'm just positioning the this other wing. So again thinking of that. What I'm doing is thinking of that bone that comes out and I'm you want it to be come out level with the bone on this side. So I'm just lifting it up into position. So a bit of a slip in there. Also, you see if you've a wee crack like that. I would make sure it's plenty of slip in there that there's no air pockets. I'm just positioning that wing the way I want it. So at this point it's really useful to have reference photographs so you know what you're aiming for. Mm. Okay, just what you use to guide you is your knowledge of the bone structure and you have that in your second template. Right. Squash this in a way with that place to hold. So I'm just playing about right with what. I feel it would be really good to have um, some more uh, reference photographs in front of me at this stage. So I'm just playing right with what I feel is aesthetically pleasing. So. And I'm just going over, iron up the feathers again. Just by stroking that. Um, this is too deep here, so I'll take some of that away. So I feel all of this is too long. Let me see. So I would be tempted to just take that off. I'm gonna just cut it off a bit more. I'll try that. So that's better. You probably don't want the two wings coming you know just straight out it will look better if they're you know say if this one's down at an angle if you think of that being a diagonal line this following through it's certainly um feeling like that the, the, there's almost a straight line through the bird whether that's on a diagonal but that they do join up I just want to And again, I'm going to look at the, the level of the wing there, take this away.
the, the feathers are, I think I might have, um, hopefully I've um, done drawn on some detail. The feathers don't just come from um, the top of the wing straight down. There are layers um, or sections of feathers. So there's these bit now these would be the longest one, the, the primary feathers at the end. So they are quite long. Um but these feathers will seem short because there's another layer of feathers over the top and on the top the, the side that would be behind that there would be another layer of feathers, especially um that would come from the body down to that joint. Um, so you'd have three different layers of feathers. So do, what I'm saying is don't be doing your feathers from this edge right out. Do them in layers. And I like this this edge to me that's um you know very irregular. I've been looking to do that, get that effect here. Don't want it too solid looking, you know, by breaking this up. Um, you're definitely going to get the feeling of those feathers, you know, almost splayed like fingers. So it would be more splayed at the end. So just a little at a time, but if you take away too much, you can put slip and put some more back on. Okay, and then just remember that this is a smooth, flat, that's attached to a bow. That's flat there. Okay, so I'll just tidy this up a little bit. I'll maybe do a separate video for the tail just because sometimes the, the video is too long, it won't just load for me. So that's how we do it. Okay, in this next stage, I will attach the tail. Um, I'm just having a wee look, I think I would like for it to be looking down a wee bit. I'm just positioning the head where I want. I'll just put a wee water clay underneath. So um, the tail is going to attach behind this um, area of clay. I'll just tidy that up a little bit. So you can work at this and get the, the details of the feathers. Remember the angle this and go from light pressure to heavier pressure and that your strokes start from the center and fan out I want it to be a lot thinner here. It's the right thickness there for me there, but I want this to thin out a bit more here. So remembering where the th feathers fan out from.
so the tail feathers can be a lot thinner than the wing feathers at the, at the edge. And that's too um, symmetrical for me. So I'll put the template over just to give me the um, the length of that first feather there. Then I know it wants to be, these want to be the longest, but I can just kind of nibble away these and you want that to be uneven okay and soften that edge so then uh, it's just a matter of um ideally you would take you'd lift this up and cross hatch the back cross hatch here as well Um, so with the cross hatching, it's important that you start in the middle of the clay and you extend past the edge of the clay in both directions so that when you add your slip and squish the two bits together, you really want the clay squishing out these scratches um, and that way you know you've got a really good join. So stick all the clay on. Just lift it and add that on. So, so you're not adding it on right at the tip. You're adding it on. You keep this on here, and you press this and join that together. And then my bird's slightly angled. Instead of being flat, it's slightly angled up. So I'll just angle this. As well, so with these wee birds, I don't really like to. You can try it, put them on, and take it off. You can try and see if you like feet. Um, they're, they're much cleaner looking, I think, without the feet. But the feet would attach on about here. If you're having feet. If you're... Some people want to put like a wee um, branch or something into it. If you're doing feet, do them very, very basic. Because when a bird's flying, its feet are all tucked up. So, um, really, you just need... I was just putting feet on here. You know, the two bits are roughly the same. If you make two bits about like this, you would get, make a hole in the middle of it, um, which is just basically where your, your feet are wrapped around, the wee bird's feet are wrapped around the front or whatever. Um, and I really wouldn't do much more than that, you know, you can just give the slightest, sometimes you can overwork a thing, um, wouldn't do too much, and then you just simply wee bit of slip and put that on, and I don't really like time wise, oh, plenty of time, so this stage then we can go back into the eye. Quite often the eye is nice just left as a whole. Um, but if you want to add in an eye, you certainly can. A wee bit of a slip. Pull the hole. Now if you were hollowing it out I would tend to with your needle tool, um, for as hollow as I, then I want that that hole to go right through into the 
into the, the gap behind, the hollowed area. Um, by doing that, it just means that there's no air going to be trapped behind the eye, between the eyeball and the socket. Um, Too big. I always tend to make the eyes too big and then I have to nip a wee bit off. Why well, don't nip a bit off at the start of it? And just slip that in. Okay, and that's about your wee bird finished. Uh, well, of course, it needs another wee foot, wee paw, but that's it basically done. So I look forward to seeing your versions. Thank you very much for watching. I'll post up a wee photograph when it's finished. Thank you.